Hey everybody, video here for you today. We're going to go document another Ancient America site. And I'm trying to fill in my map here, as many ancient mound sites as I can. And then when I start looking into another site, five more pop up. So I'm going to be talking about this for quite a while. But we're going down to the Bottle Creek Mounds, and this is a very important site. But this is the area of the ancient village. Some dry land here in this Mobile Tensaw River Delta here. But a big ancient village, 18 Indian mounds. Let's take a look at what it looked like. But this site kind of reminds me of the Guatemalan jungle and other places in Mesoamerica where the jungle just swallows up pyramid sites. Let's match up the little bend in the river here and the creek here running right here and take a look at what this place used to look like. Here is a look at the Bottle Creek site. Notice north is a little askew here and I did that on Google Earth. Matched up the little bend in the river here and the creek. This is what this site used to look like a long time ago. But here is the Bottle Creek site. Many mounds and this was home to maybe 2,000, 3,000 people maybe five, six hundred years ago. And this place is kind of a mystery. Now pretty much all the mounds are still here but they're just covered in trees and undergrowth. But this place was visited in 1702, let's just read. In 1702, a young French Canadian climbed a 45 foot mound on an isolated island deep in the Tensaw River Delta. The island had been home to as many as 2,000 people in the 1300s and 1400s, but by the start of the 1700s, it was almost deserted, but still held in esteem by the local tribes. An Indian who had been paid with a gun to guide the young man to the spot would not approach the remains of a temple on top of the mound. Alone, the young man entered the temple. Inside, he found five clay figures, a man, a woman, child, bear, and an owl. No giant boulders rolled down to chase the explorer, although his guide was reported to be terrified that he'd taken the objects. The young man, John Baptiste Lemoyne de Beneville, went on to win fame for his role in founding Mobile and New Orleans. More than 300 years later, last Sunday, about 50 people stood on top of the same mound. We didn't have to pay anyone with a gun, but Bottle Creek is still not the easiest place to reach. It still took about an hour to reach the site by boat from the lower Bryan's Landing north of Bay Minette. But it said there was a bear figurine in this mysterious temple found on top of the large mound. What significance does a bear have? Well, here you see a bear. What does this represent? Well, this is a shaman. And I've talked about shamans in my Mound Builder series many times. But it says around 1250, people from Moundville came south and began living on this island here. It says the site where we were standing, Mound A, is the tallest of the 18 mounds on the island. The structure probably took about 100 years to build in stages. One woven basket of clay at a time. Greg Wesselkov, director of the University of South Alabama, told the group, the temple is long gone. Bainville sent the clay figures to France and no one knows what happened to them. Isolated in the Delta, Mound Island still holds mysteries. No one is sure why the Indians chose the location. One theory was that they wanted a share of the lucrative trade in seashells between the coast and the inland tribes. It says another reason may have been protection. The area was already occupied when the Indians came down from the north and the newcomers would have been considered invaders. Signs of fortification have been found on parts of the island. So some things have been stated about this place, but there are still mysteries that remain. It says no one is sure where the dirt for the mounds came from. The island has two areas where clay was dug from pits, but the sites are way too small to account for all the dirt needed to build the mounds. The site was a political, cultural, and religious center for about 300 years, controlling a region from the Florida Panhandle to the Mississippi River. Climbing the equivalent of more than four stories up the steep sides of the slope gives you an appreciation for the scale of the undertaking. From the top of the mound, you look down on what would have been a thriving community more than 700 years ago. The culture that built the mounds vanished around the time of the first European contact, and did disease wipe them out? I know Graham Hancock has stated that about cultures in South America. It says, even their own descendants, the Creeks and the Choctaws, were baffled by the mounds. Today the site looks as it did when Bineville visited. The structures they left behind were well engineered, a reminder line isolated in the delta of the capability of those who came before us. 
But here is a link from South Alabama Education. It says, Bottle Creek, the largest Mississippian town site on the northern Gulf Coast, has 18 earthen mounds that served as platforms for houses and temples. And here you see the people climbing up one of the larger mounds. And this area, the swamp area, is totally flat. So when you go to visit this site, I guess it really hits you how impressive it would have been to build these large mound structures that certainly represented the same things pyramids did to people south of here. Here is another artist rendering of what this place may have looked like. The material for all these mounds, where did it come from? They have no clue. But it goes on to say in a few articles that research here has determined that the chiefs lived on the tall mounds and the lower class lived on the smaller mounds. But here on this website gives a little artist rendition of the village and the mounds here. The ancient harbor says it could have handled large trade canoes and trade was certainly going on here. And it says it also certainly could have handled large Mayan Chantal sailboats. Now here again is the overhead contour map site. And this little bend in the creek right here, let me just show you what the site looks like here when you enter it. And the bend in the creek, I think that's the area right here where you access the mound site. And if anybody has been here or plans on going here, be sure to let me know in the comment section. But there is broken pottery shards with designs on them. And at the bottom of one of the mounds, there was these common post holes that we've seen from other mound sites around the United States. But there has been artifacts found here over the last few centuries. Here is one that they call a human clay effigy. Here is a small human effigy, about five centimeters wide. That was also found here. Pointy head. It says, additional excavations were conducted at the large rounded terrace that projects off the northeast end of Mound B. A test trench dug in 1994 showed quite clearly that there was a considerable degree of engineering involved in the construction of Mound B and the terrace. Clearly, the inhabitants of Bottle Creek were remarkably sophisticated when it came to moving earth. Bottle Creek was probably a major religious center throughout much of its history. It is possible that, given the number of burial mounds found on the outer edges of the settlement, it eventually became a mortuary center in the manner of Moundville. But why did this remote location in the center of a swamp attract its ancient inhabitants? The answer to this question perhaps lies beyond the realm of archaeology. But this is alabamamoundtrail.org, and I will leave a bunch of uh, website links below. But I thought this site was fascinating. These mounds are still here, and it's only because it's so inaccessible. That's the way it appears to me. But big mounds still here, and this is one of the places that DeSoto visited, and he wrote about evidence of skull deformation at the site. So that is another interesting aspect of this. I want to bring up. I think there's a lot of unanswered questions here. Here is the sign that was erected here at the beginning of the trailhead that leads up to the Mound Village. And I think this and Moundville are the only two mound sites designated as historical sites in Alabama. And I think this place is fascinating. A lot of us kind of wonder about exploring the jungles and what's under those as far as ancient cities and pyramids. Well, here, right in the southern United States, we have a place that is very similar. But that is my video on the Bottle Creek Mounds. And these lighter areas are swampy areas, and the dark areas are the dry land areas. I just wanted to point that out. But two days ago, I wanted to talk about the Smith Creek Mounds, a very non-distinct, anonymous site. Well, this site here appears to be very important in the whole scope of things in the southern United States. The only other time I heard about this delta, I believe right down uh, in this area down here, in Amtrak, went off the tracks in a terrible accident maybe about 25 years ago if I'm not mistaken but that is a very important site in ancient America and I know ancient America isn't as exciting and I said that on my last video as some of the other ancient sites in the world there isn't megalithic architecture these aren't super super old but just what happened is sometimes good enough pyramid cities in the southern United States well that's good enough for me. Hope you thought that was cool. And you all have a very nice day.